Thank you, Madam President. Uh, first of all, in the uh, litany of uh, saying thank yous, let me join the course and thank uh, Senator Kane uh, and Senator Bai for their work over the past couple of days, as well as uh, uh, Representative Zabron and Representative Walker for their sort of staying with this issue as it kind of drifted left and right. And I don't mean that politically, I mean that in terms of moving targets. I also want to thank Joel Rudikoff, Jared Schmidt, Lisa Hammersley, who we could not do without in our Senate office, and the governor's office, and obviously the leadership of Senator Looney and Senator Duff and Senator Wickos in uh, putting together what always is a challenging time, which is our budget. And it's kind of nice to have a budget for once that we're not talking about over four hours at midnight and we're actually coming together. Look, these are difficult times. Had we done nothing today, let's paint the picture of where we would be had we done nothing. The governor has the obligation of making rescissions and has the authority to make the rescissions and it is his fiduciary power and responsibility as a governor to make those rescissions. And those rescissions and holdbacks resulted in the hospitals not getting their money and significant cuts to social programs. Now, I'm not faulting him. That's what he had to do. He doesn't have as many tools as we do as a legislature. So had we not passed this today, those cuts would go into effect. Every article that you've all read from all the advocates saying our social services were decimated by these cuts, where you've gotten emails from facilities closing down would continue. We stopped that today. This is a 2% cut to services over the entire budget, if you look at it in that re regard. Only a 0.2% cut to services. If you check with OFA, no social service is going to be harmed by these cuts. We all looked into, the, into this, and the leaders of appropriation spent a lot of time making sure that would happen. What else would happen? The hospitals would be without the money. We all know what that means. Medicaid patients, hospitals closing down, laying off people. That's health care. If there ever was a core function, Social service and health care are those core functions. And what we've done today is say, hey, as a state, we need Republicans and Democrats to get together and stop the bleeding and make people feel comfortable that our core parts of our state government can be held intact. That's what this does today. Absent this. People are in real jeopardy. That's why we had to come together. You know what? The leaders knew that. Leaders of the House, leaders of the Senate. I also meant to thank Representative Claritas and the Speaker of the House for putting their people uh, involved in this and working together in, in a bi-chamber cooperation. I know Representative Claritas put many hours into this. But the point of it is, we all had to come together as a government. People depend upon that. And we saved, and I'm going to use the word saved, social services, and we saved hospitals. Is that the end of the story? No. There is much more we have to do. We all know that the big issue is coming at us full steam ahead. And that's April 29th, 22nd. When the estimated and the taxes start coming in and consensus revenue is scheduled for the 30th and we're out of this place on May 4th. Unfortunately, it might be my opinion alone, but I think it's shared by many in this chamber, we're going to be hitting a deficit for 2016 also, although we solve 220, there'll be another deficit around the corner. It's unfortunate, but that's the truth. And in 2017, a year from now, right now they say it's 900 million. I would take a bet, since I lost my NAA, uh, my uh, bracket on the college already, I'm done. I picked Virginia, so I'm out of that. So I'll make another bet and say a year from now, we're going to be 
at $1.2 to $1.4 billion in debt. I think that's where we're going to be. I hope I'm wrong, but I don't think I am. We have to talk about structural changes now. We can't wait for May 3rd. We can't wait for May 2nd. We got to talk about structural changes now, some of which Senator Lanier has talked about, but many others. Reducing our debt, our bonding. We got to start speaking about it now. We could have talked about it in December, but that notion was left out of the package. But until we start making our structural changes in this state, we're going to be here time after time, year after year, making the same cuts and numbers juggling to make the year balance. That's wrong. It's not responsible government. Now, we got away with it this time. And we're able to do some good things for hospitals and social services. But if we rest on our laurels, we're going to be in big trouble. We need to have the conversations now. They have to include structural changes. Everything's on the table, and we need to do that. This is not enough. I do want to finish with this. Governor Malloy called us in a room and put out a challenge and said, I defy House and Senate, R's and D's, to get together and solve 220. And I'm proud to say both chambers and the leadership met the challenge that the governor laid out there. I applaud the governor for calling us in, and I applaud us for getting the job done. But we have to go further. This is just a quick moment of time, and there isn't much time to celebrate. But it does show that we can get together, and it does show when we use the talent in both caucuses and in our staff and in both caucuses uh, downstairs, we can accomplish amazing things. So I'll be supporting this budget. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, sir.